Hello and welcome, I'm Arumba. thank you for joining me. This is Arumba's preview of uh, City Skylines. So, this game is coming out here in about a month or so. Maybe not quite that far, it looks like March 10th or 11th, I think? But I could be mistaken, don't quote me on that. There may be a, a correction in an annotation or in the description down below. But, um, this year at ParadoxCon 2015, I had the opportunity to try the game out. Um, myself and another of... Uh, Another few YouTubers and some other press people had access to the game. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of do a, a voice commentary over my preview footage and just kind of tell you what we were what we were looking at and my thoughts on the game. So I can, I can tell you right away that when this game comes out, I'm going to be playing it. It's, it's something that I'm pretty excited about. Now, I don't want to draw too many comparisons between this game and like, say, SimCity 5, because that's basically what its main competitor would be is. But... Um, that may may come about. We may draw some compares some compar comparison. Excuse me, here and there. So, one of the things that I liked about this game in the very beginning, just just diving right in, was that. Um, see, I'm already trying to try to avoid making comparisons, but there's like, okay, you can have a huge amount of buildable space. I, I'm a player that comes from like SimCity on the Super Nintendo. Um, that's how long ago I started playing Sim games. I played Sim Farm, Sim Ant, Sim Tower. I played all those things. I played SimCity uh, 2000. I played SimCity 4. I, played, I mean, you played all that stuff. And when SimCity 5 came out, I, I bought the game, but I didn't play it. And a big part of that was the, uh, you know, a lot of people were complaining about uh, certain development aspects of the game. And... Um, you know, again, here I go, already drawing major comparisons between this game and SimCity, but I almost feel like this game is like um, it's designed to counter the complaints that were made about SimCity 5, and and I, I think that that's okay. You know, like ultimately, I think when people play Sim like build building style games, they want a lot of freedom, they want the ability to do what they want, where they want, whether it's right or wrong, it doesn't really matter. But um, you should just be able to build however you want to build it. So. In this game, you'll find things like um, a settings file where you can go in and just make the amount of billable space that you get bigger. Um, there's really no limit to the amount of space you can use aside from how powerful your computer is. So you've got truly like limitless sizes available. The default size gives you nine buildable tiles. Like what we're looking at right now is tile number one. You start the game off with just one. You've got to buy more space as your town grows. Um, here you can see I'm putting down our very first power supply, and uh, I've actually, it's kind of interesting, I actually uncovered a bug during my, uh, my alpha playthrough here, which uh, they've already since fixed, but, you know, I like to think I'm special. I'm, my min-max playstyle immediately identifies a bug that somehow the quality theme missed makes me, makes me special, right? So, placing down some windmills, so we have some power. And uh, anyway, back to the amount of space that you get, right? So this is the one buildable tile that you start off with, and this is uh, the thing that you can customize the size of. So you can make it bigger in the settings, you can uh, increase the number of viable tiles you can use, and when you when you buy these nine tiles, they don't have to be like in a square. You can you could build one big long straight city if you wanted to, or you could build a C shape or whatever the hell you want. There's really no limit. It's very open ended in that way. So. I am, uh, you know, this is my very first experience playing the game. Don't don't expect me to be any good at it. I'm just throwing around some pipes connecting um, the inlet. You've got the input for water, and then you've got an output for water. And uh, a pair, a very important feature is that uh, you make sure that the output is below the input in the water flow, because otherwise you've got sewage that will run into your water. Now, don't ask me what happens to cities further on down the stream, because we're apparently just dumping like you know, refuse directly into the water. Now, one of the things that the uh, the, the developer and the, the other people who were there at the event told us not to do is don't try to build too big too fast, which, of course, I ignored, because that's just what I do. And, uh, yeah, I pretty much laid down a, a water grid available to cover the whole area. And uh, there, we, yeah, there you can see connecting power to the actual area. Now... The very first time I tried it, I didn't actually save that footage because it was so terrible. I didn't realize you had to connect to these highways. So what you do is you connect roads to the, the bypassing or the, the the highways that are off to the side. And that's what allows people access to your city. And it'll just grow. You know, it'll just start to grow. If you have available residential, you can see down at the bottom left, um, 
bottom middle left, you've got the residential, industrial, commercial desire charts. Um, by no means is that propi like proprietary a feature of, of any specific building game, <clears throat> not naming names. I mean, it's part of all, all of these builder style games. You've got residential, commercial, and an industrial. And uh, you can immediately see the houses going up. Now, I think that you'll notice as, as the gameplay footage here is unwinding and playing through, you can see how I think the game is quite pretty. You can zoom in quite far. The game is very immersive. And one of the things that's different about this game compared to other games is that you um, each and every individual sim or I, I should call them sims, right? Because that's not fair. Um, each individual citizen is is a special person, right? And they've got their own home, they've got their own job, and they actually live and work in the places that they belong to. So you you can follow a, a citizen from their house to their job, and it's not randomized. It's like, that is their job. It doesn't just change. Here you can see is where I ran out of money. Oops, it happens. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a big difference between this game and other games um <laughs> sim city 5 um so yeah you, you know like my the complaint in that game is that you they simulate it kind of but they don't really do it it's like everyone will like just pick a random job and their job changes every single day so one of the things i was experimenting with here because i am a min max type player is um i was trying to figure out like okay so if i lower the budget for some of these structures what happens specifically and what I found is that, um, and this is, again, this is alpha footage, so this may change between now and release, but I can just, I can tell you what I saw and what I figured out from here. You've got these sliders on the budget, and you can reduce spending on things like water, electricity, police departments, education, whatever you want. And if you do these things, it reduces the amount of expenses that you have to pay, but it also reduces the effectiveness. What I found is that by reducing the spending by 50%, you reduce the effectiveness by 75%. So you're, you, what you want to do is you don't want to overbuild because it's very expensive to pay for the excess structures. And lowering the spending doesn't really quite cut it. Like it, it's, a, it's a good short-term solution if you have to go way over or something, or if you're stupid like I am and I... You spend all your money and you're desperate for funds so that you can actually finish the stupid power connection to connect the damn sewage output, which is a problem I'm running into here. Um, yeah, you, you don't want to do that. But you can also overspend. You can go up to 150% spending. You like, spend extra money. And I did not yet quite get the ability to like figure out exactly how that affects things, but I'm imagining it's got the same kind of... Um, kind of trade-off you know I, if i had to guess i'd say 50 percent extra spending increases production by 25 percent. that would just be kind of the logical conclusion based on the, the way the other side of the equation works so here you can see the power grid you can see I've, I've basically just built some streets that are in very very boring columns because that's just <laughs> the most efficient way i could think of and uh and pretty soon you might actually see the bug that i was talking about i'll point it out when we see it you can see um, on that graph there, in the top left corner, whenever you select any kind of power structure, that you you can see like the, the red represents not having enough. Yellow is right in the middle. Green, you can see we've got way more power than we need right now. And if I wanted to, I could lower power spending so that we could save a little bit of money. Towards the, the bottom of the screen, you can see our cash. You can see how much money we're gaining each day. A little bit to the right of that, you can see the number of citizens, how many we're gaining each day. Um, in the very bottom left of the screen, you can see this this green bar that's filling, and each time that bar fills is a day. Um, or, yeah, it's, it's how often the days pass. You can see 60604, 0704, and of course, because this is a game that's made by Europeans, it's counting in the European style. So, what that's representing is April 8th, now April 9th, April 10th, etc. So, it's counting every individual day. Um, you might have, if you were an American, dumb American like me, right? You might have assumed it was counting like months or something, like what the hell's going on? But no, they count days first because that makes sense. It actually does. Smallest, medium, largest. I don't know why in the United States we count medium, like the middle value, then the day, and then the year. It's kind of weird. Although it, it does take some getting used to. So you can see the, uh, the sewage, right? Or the, the underlying utilities there. 
Here we can see the citizen happiness. I'm just clicking through the various menus. I've really no idea what I'm looking for or what's good or what's bad yet. Um, I pretty much ignore the tutorial because I'm more of a hands-on kind of player. I just like to click on stuff and like try to figure it out as I go and learn directly. If if there's a Wikipedia article available on it, I'll read it. But there wasn't because you know it hasn't been made yet. Um, so we're getting some pretty good money. Things are going all right. And I might, we'll see if I end up doing like just a 40 long minute commentary on this. Because there's about 45 or so minutes of footage that I have. Or I might speed it up a bit. Because because of the way that I spent all my money, I kind of like have to wait for some funds here. To actually continue to the, the build out. My goal was to just like, just get a lot of people in there right away. I do end up messing around with taxes quite a bit. Here's where you can see I'm like looking around trying to, okay, what's the, what's the viewing look like? This game was made in the Unity engine, which um, is amazing to me because I, I don't know anything about coding really anymore, but I do know that the Unity engine can have some issues with like 3D graphics and stuff, and yet this game runs beautifully. I could not see like any lag, you go to any building structure, everything runs crisp and clean and amazing. And it's not just in my initial city here. We were able to load up um, some of the Paradox team who has had access to the game, has been playing it as well. And they showed us one of their saves, a city with like, I can't even recall these specific numbers, but it was like 200,000 citizens or something. And keep in mind, each of these citizens are individually represented. They are actual people that were moving around in the city. So their game ran just as well as, just as, well as mine does. There wasn't any noticeable slowdown, which was insane. So because we've leveled up, uh, we've hit a, a city milestone. Now they've unlocked a few more structures for us. So we're going to throw down our very first garbage dump. I have no idea where the right place to put it is, so we'll put it near the highway. Why not? Next up, we have a health center. Again, I, you can see here that the darkness of the green on the roads represents how much of the, this area will be covered and how efficiently. So, there you can see everyone's pretty happy to have a health center nearby. We also just threw down a, a um, elementary school. So, the elementary school, you'll notice, though, doesn't quite serve quite as many people. So we might end up needing to build an extra one. Not enough workers, it says. So I didn't really get a chance to dive in and like figure out exactly what that meant. Not not really, but I would assume it's just we need to bring in more people. Like our... You know, as you build the city up, your commercial buildings can hold more people maybe than, than the actual number of citizens that you have. And again, since every, every citizen is a real person, um, you need to find workers. So, um, one of the other things about the game that's pretty cool, I thought, is that this game is being marketed and made as a, as a single player game. There, there is no online mode, there is no multiplayer. Um, which I think is good, honestly. I, I do not like the concept of multiplayer SimCity. Um, or Sim building games. Like, to me, Sim building games and just city design and all that's always been a single player game. And, and of course, the fact that it's offline means that you don't have to worry about always online DRM or any of that other nonsense that that other one game had issues with. So yet again, I do want to apologize if I'm drawing too many comparisons, but um, I'm going to keep on doing it because that's kind of what I was thinking about the entire time I was playing the game. So here you could see I'm like desperate for money. I'm like, where the hell is all my... I need money. And uh, I wanted to, to raise taxes. And... Here we can see, I was like, okay, well, how does taxes, that was what they, they had told me. Not only will taxes affect growth rate, but it'll also affect happiness. And it's like, okay, where's the where's the happiness graph? I found it in the statistics there. And now I'm trying to figure out, like, okay, I just raised it, I just cranked it. I want to see how much money I get. And then you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, right next to the little happy face, um, the number of citizens we're gaining. And that's, I believe, I, I don't think that's per day. I'm pretty sure that's, yeah, weekly change, it says. So, again, every single day is actually a real day. So we're getting 45 a week, which is not very many. Um, and you can see that number is going down as a direct result of, ha of having raised taxes. So I figured, okay, well, let's let's just let it go for a little while, figure out exactly how much money we make having taxes cranked to the max, and how low how slow our, our city will grow if we play that way. And then in a little bit, you'll see I'm going to actually reverse that and go the opposite direction, because, again, I want to experiment. I want to find out exactly how it works. If we go really, really, really low on taxes, do we get a huge growth rate? And maybe... Maybe we can go like really low taxes and then just allow a lot of time to pass. That kind of thing. It really just kind of depends on your play style. But um, looking at electricity, um, the residential and commercial structures are automatically creating 
um, grids. You'll notice I didn't have to place power poles everywhere. I did have to do the manually placed pipes underground to make sure everyone had access to water. But the uh, the pipes, or sorry, the, the power poles only need to be used to connect the blue shaded areas. Here I'm looking around at the advanced wind turbine, which is something we'll be able to unlock a little bit later. It's a wind turbine you can actually place in the water, which gains advantages from um, not only the wind, but also the the current in, in the water. So I'll just explain what the bug I found was. It's not a very major thing, but if you build too closely, or in this patch, this version of the game, if you had built too closely to the very edge of the map, um, there's like a hitbox issue where you, you could place it, but then you couldn't select it. So you'll see me clicking on a lot of these wind turbines, trying to like, why can't I click on this? And it's because of that bug. Um, it was placeable, yet not selectable. It was too close to the edge. So they've, again, they've fixed that. Don't worry. It'll be fixed. It's fine. They're doing just fine. So here, here we're down to like zero, what, zero percent? I think it's all the way to one percent taxes on residential. Look again at the, uh, the weekly growth rates down to all the way down to like 18. So I was looking at that like, oh, that's bad. Like we're... We're never going to grow at this rate. Money's nice, but we need people. I'd rather have more people with fewer taxes than have fewer people with really high taxes. You know? Better, I think, to have more money from a few people. Sorry, more money from a huge number of people than it is to have a lot of money from few people. You can see the growth rate already starting to go back up, up to 21, now 23. It seems to take quite a bit of time to actually, like, reach its full effect. I really like this feature. Notice how it's got that spacing, it's got the grid lines to let you know not only each individual grid tile, but also like 10 unit increments of road. And it's, I th I'm pretty sure it was 10, I, I don't really remember exactly, but what I had learned or noticed was that if you build these grid roads and you used every single dashed line, you could create these perfect little grids that would give you full buildable, buildable space. You can build curved roads, and it will automatically generate, like, the the ideal shape for, for for placing residential and commercial and industrial areas. But, I don't know. Curved roads are pretty, but they're not min-maxi enough. They don't, they don't give you as many people as possible. And here I'm kind of, like, learning, still. Notice in the education, we've got a capacity of 600 students, eligible 165. And so, the issue here, looking at the... Uh, Eligible actually says there, I think, 237, capacity 600. So I'm thinking, okay, so we have way too much, way too much education spending going on. Let's go see how much these guys cost to, to pay for. And learning what I had learned earlier about, okay, if we lower funding by 50%, we can, we'll lose 25, uh, sorry, 75% of the effectiveness. We can still probably get away with lowering it a bit and save just a little bit of money. We're spending 320 ducats, ducats of buckets, or uh, I don't know what to call them, so we're going to call them ducats. Um, and I'd rather not pay that much. And here you can see, yep, okay, I just confirmed it went from 600 down to 150. Again, same thing that had happened with water and with power. So we're going to go back and we're going to raise it to like maybe 60 or 70%, somewhere around there. And, uh, that way we can still save a little bit of money, but also keep the available amount of, uh, education at the right number. Now, I'm pretty sure I'm going to go check it again. Yep, just to make sure. Again, eligible 246, and uh, the capacity is, is plenty. It was actually very intuitive, you know? Aside from, like, having to figure out that ratio of, like, okay, how much is it actually reducing the effectiveness by? I had only played the game for, like, 10 minutes, and everything else has made tons of sense. So, no real complaints about the interface. I think it's very intuitive, something that um, is very appreciated by someone like me. So... From here, um, let's see, you know, I, I kind of considered, I'm doing some cost comparison between the water tower and the water pump. We just hit a worthy village size. Every time you do something, this is unlocking a new 2 kilometer by 2 kilometer area. You can see all these new features that we get. We get um, fire departments, police departments, we get new, new other stuff. There's also this, also this little bird thing, which is supposed to mimic like Twitter. Little tweet stuff about what's going on in your city, which is kind of cool. So here's where you get to decide, like, which, which tile do you want to buy? And it shows you, like, the outside connections that it has, the natural resources that it has, and uh, the actual price that you'd have to pay. So the other thing that the game does that I think is really kind of cool is that every time you upgrade to a larger size city, it gives you a tiny influx of cash. 
like just enough so that you have the ability to build like one of the buildings that it unlocks. Not all of them. It's not like you get so much money that there's no challenge to the game. It's just that if you're kind of running like close to the red and you don't have a lot of money moving up to the next size, when you get that upgraded city size, the citizens, it's like they, they want the new stuff. They want like a fire department. They want a police department. And it would just be terrible if you had all this need for structure and you have no money. So they give you a little bit of money just to like kind of ease you into the next size city level. So it's kind of like a tutorial is built into the very regular gameplay. I was trying to have, I was having a little hard time getting used to this, the way that when you place a road and then, and then place the next road, you'll so see how like it, it kind of like continues on. Like it, it assumes you want to place more roads after you've placed the one road. So you got to left click and then when you're done placing a road, you right click to, to like stop it from continuing. And I can see where it'd be useful if like, you're doing bridge work, or if you're working on maybe some some curved roads, that having it continue the, the road planning tool is, is kind of nice. And this is where I kind of realized as well, you could just right click on a, on a zone and it deselects the currently selected type of thing. I did that by accident, but... Ah yes, my very first exposure to an abandoned building. You can destroy them using the bulldozer in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Or you can ignore them. People don't like them. I think they're higher, like they increase crime, they increase other stuff. And it's a sign that uh, business has been moving. So, go ahead and bulldoze a few. And now we have unlocked policies as well. So, energy conservation is important. And the best way to do it is yada yada. You can read the rest of that. Just pause the video if you'd like. But, um, I'm like, yeah, these all sound great. They don't look like they cost very much. Five something per building? That's not very much. Let's activate them all. Watch watch our daily, or our weekly funding. <laughs> it's going to very rapidly change, and I'm going to realize that that was a mistake for, for that. I'm not exactly sure when the policies become efficient. Or, like, what the right size city you need is to make it work, but... Notice our money right now. It's at positive, like, what, 49, I think that says? Now negative 127. Every day that goes by, it's it's adjusting based on the running seven-day average or projection. Because it doesn't really know what your expenses are going to be until each tick, each day, passes. So that's just a, a running average, a moving average of your income. You'll see how negative it's going to get here pretty quick. We're at 10,000 ducats. And here's where I'm like, what the hell? Why is it so negative? What's happening? Oh, crap. Weekly policies, 2,300. That's a lot. No. Let's just turn those off. I don't think we want to use these. And I'm reading the tooltip now, like, upkeep, five per building. How many freaking buildings did I make? Like, damn. And this is where I started to, like, kind of realize it was showing a moving average, because I'm looking at it like, okay, it didn't update right away. Why is it not updating right away? And every day that's going by, you can see that number coming down. So again, it's taking the, the sum of, like, the seven days around might even be 14 days i'm not actually sure how, how big the moving average is could even be 30 come to think of it but it is a moving average of the days that have recently passed so there's a little bit of tweaking going on here and there again maybe maybe raise taxes a little tiny bit i think it starts off at like five percent so i didn't feel too bad having it at uh somewhere somewhere below ten percent not yet sure what the uh, the other taxes there are. Probably higher end, like, you know, bigger, more developed areas. And this is about the time where we're actually going to uncover the bug. Not a big deal, but... So with all the poking around and just trying to figure things out... I wasn't able to get up to a very huge city, but I beat Mathis, and that's all that really matters. He was sitting right next to me while we played. My city was bigger and better in almost every way, and I don't mind him hearing me say that, so ha 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 ha. So yeah, I'm looking around, we, we need to place the fire department. I think that if you save money, or... Um, just you just tend to not spend all of the money that you make. It'd probably be easier to grow the city because, again, it gives you some money when you get to a bigger city size, but not enough to build everything you need. So I was considering some of the loans. 
I know some people some people when they build cities are not afraid of loans and, and to be honest they're probably worth it not not some of the like loan shark type loans but um depends on how quickly you want to grow you can rename like every building you can rename um, different regions of your town you can create like customized communities you can have policies that that only affect one specific community. So if you want to make like a you know richy rich area or you want to make like a crime infested area, you you could you could literally build an area of town where like there are no police and like crime is legal. You could do like what you do in that one movie, which is kind of weird, you know, where they have like no rules for one day out of every year or something. I forget what it's called, but most people were happy by me placing that building, but the one dude who lived there probably wasn't, because we just placed it right on his house. And we've reached a tiny town size. Now, I realized, I was thinking, oh, I get to buy more land. No, that's not every time you level up, it's only every now and then. So then I was going back, okay, well, what did I get? Level 2 unique buildings, we get a pet ban, smoking ban, parks and recreation. And now we can build a high school. So, I will say that I would like if these these map modes that I'm hovering over right now actually had keyboard shortcuts. It's one of the few things that the game was lacking. Is that uh, and again, keep in mind this is an alpha build, so everything could change theoretically between now and release. Maybe it's one of the last things that they're putting together. Who knows? Um, noticing some water issues, but then I'm going to get pretty heavily distracted by the power issue. And I remembered that water was just something where I was under budget. If we raise, uh, oh, actually overpowering. And here, here it is right here. I'm trying to click on these. Like, why can't I click on that? I can click on this one. But. And this is me trying to figure it out. Like, okay, it's at the nine megawatts. We just raised power to 150%. And I, I still, again, I hadn't had a chance yet to quite figure out exactly what the the effect of 150% power was. It almost did seem like 150% just gave us 150%. And that's the case, and that's pretty awesome. Because you could just run power at most of the most of the things at 150% and get a lot of value out of it. But yeah, click 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 click. Why can't I click on these ones? And uh, the issue was it was placed too close to the border. So don't worry about it. It'll be fixed by the time you can play the game. But it was very distracting for me. Just back and forth. Clicky, click, click, click. I can't click on this one. <laughs> I can click on this one, but I can't click on this one. Mm, anyway. New services. So remember, you need to build a fire department. I think that says something like that. But I can't click on this windmill. I'm too distracted. I must place the wind. I know I must click on it. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. Town's growing pretty well. We're up to 2,000 people after, what has it only been like, I think, 25, 30 minutes of gameplay. Seems pretty reasonably quick. You can see lots of cars coming in, people moving in. The garbage trucks moving out. Now there are going to be, later on in the, in, in the game, you'll have things like airports and... I believe there are like shipping structures of some kind and you do have an import export type business. There's a lot going on with that. But I think I, I lost my train of thought there a minute ago, but yeah, you, you could totally create policies that create specific regions and you can have a lot of customization to your city. City needs more water. So I had way too much water in the beginning. Now you can see water availabilities in the red. All we gotta do is just go back to the budget and just raise it a little bit. The disparity between the amount of available water you get and the amount of money you're spending is pretty significant, so... Up until now, pretty much running power, uh, making, getting power completely from wind. Which is probably better, I don't know, I mean... I didn't really mess with pollution. I can't click on this one either! <laughs> I was so frustrated by it, like, what is going on? But again, it's just because I want to put it at the very edge of the town. I'm a little bit obsessive in that way, like, I don't want to waste space. That's why we're building in a grid. And that actually was about the time that I figured it out, like, okay, this is... 
this is probably related to building um, on the edge of the map. So, yeah. I'm actually loading up a save file to send to the, the developer there. And we're back in. Yep, that's me, a Roomba expert QA guy. Discovered the bug, found the solution or the cause of the bug, and submitted within 30 minutes. They should hire me. Do it. I'll play for free. Just give me access to all of your games early, and uh, it'll be great. Let me play them. So there's all kinds of different types of roads. Uh, up until now, I've pretty much just been using the most basic of roads, but... Um, they have different speeds on them, and that has a different effect on the throughput. You can see it's automatically going to make a bridge. So I started to wonder, like, if I were to connect to this other highway, would that increase maybe the growth rate or something? And I, I wasn't, I'm still not sure if that's a true statement or not, but I figured it couldn't hurt, so I might as well just build some more roads. And we're still making money, gaining 100 people per week. Of course, I can't help myself. I still continue to place them on the very edge of the map. <laughs> click, click, click. You can almost hear me. You can almost hear the mouse, right? Making the noise that you want it to make. Based on my experience in, like, Factorio or something, I'm pretty heavily favoring the wind energy, the clean energy. But... It would be interesting to try experimenting with some of the other power sources as well. From what I saw, there was like coal. I have to assume there's nuclear and other sources as well. Wouldn't be surprised to find out you can burn garbage. You know, like a garbage processing area that recycles garbage and burns garbage and creates energy somehow. Various people in the room were coming around like, What's this bug you found? And that's why I keep on going back to it. I'm not that obsessive. It's just, you know, people wanted to know. I hope people aren't getting the wrong impression. Um, you know, me focusing on this budge, this, uh, this bug, excuse me. It wasn't a big deal. I mean, you have to expect that in all, ver all video games you'll find minor bugs and glitches in alpha state. But that's part of the reason why they, uh, they do alpha testing. And the game will be ready when it's ready, so have no fear. It'll be a fantastic title upon release. I'm very excited about it. I can easily see me um, getting really obsessed with um, proper city layout and spacing and, like, you know, density. How far apart can you get away with putting your police departments and fire departments? And I just kind of like the visual appeal of the game. It, it, it seems to me like it's got a very clean UI. And that's what I like. I don't like things that get really messy and, and confusing. This, this to me, seems very clean. Easy to understand what you're looking at. Now, that being said, my one fear for the game is that I'm, I'm a little bit curious about replayability. There's different maps that you can play on. There's all kinds of different sizes that you can put, or, like, different styles of map. Some of them are flat, like this one, and... Other ones will have other designs and layouts and stuff, but I'm wondering, like, is the experience of building a city to, say, like, 100,000 different on one map versus another, or is it really the same thing? And I, and I kind of have a feeling it's going to be very similar, so I do have that concern about replayability, but we'll see. You know, Paradox and... and and the developer here for City Skylines, they both have the same goal. They want tremendous replayability, lots of value out of their titles. And I, I expect that we're going to see some sort of a solution from them if, if the game does end up lacking in replayability. But, again, I, I think that it's going to be quite a bit of fun. Eagerly anticipating it. Realizing that I don't have quite enough education around to get them fully educated. High school availability, we're placed down the high school. And I think we're going to go back to the elementary here in a moment. 
Realizing that we don't have enough elementary school education. Also, a huge number of uneducated people. I don't yet know exactly what the effect is to having people be uneducated. But we will find out probably pretty early on in, in the campaign that I do. Running into some power issues. Seems like it, it's kind of either... I'm not sure if it's randomly deciding who doesn't get power and who does. Or if it's based on distance from power, but... We're having, we're having water availability issues because the water power plant, or the water plant, doesn't have enough power. So this is, now I'm looking at like, okay, what's the difference between a water pumping station and a water tower? And trying to figure it out. Got noise pollution from both. Um, seemed to me like the, the one on the water is better, based on cost. And now I'm just trying to figure out like, why can't I place this? I guess it's because of the power line. Could bulldoze it. Instead, we'll try to put it right up against, try to, you know, no pixels, no spare pixels. And, uh, just extend the pipes along, and we'll just end up putting tons of them over there. Now I'm finally noticing that they don't have power. Oops. We'll place more of these things on the very edge of the map, where I'll never be able to select them again. You can move power, you can move buildings, quite a few of them, in fact. I don't believe you can move like houses that are already on the ground but you can move like these power structures and stuff and these ones I'm like oh look I can click on them that's definitely the issue then this is where we finally solve the problem it's that this one was spaced uh, too far away there's a button in there to relocate there is a cost associated with relocating so it's not like you could just do it for free but um, yeah, I think it's nice that you have the ability to build the town and expand outward. Now you can see we're up to three tiles. And I know I've already said it, but to reiterate, nine is the, the default maximum in the game. Although it does look like the game will have quite a, a heavily moddable um, base game. Like, you can change a lot. I didn't really get to experiment much with highways, but there are all kinds of crazy highway designs that you can make. And this is the confirmation. Yep, can't click on that one. And then I think I place one more. Except I don't have any money. But I was 99% sure that that was the problem. And yet again, one more time, just want to reiterate, it's already been fixed. So they're that quick. Like, a, within one day, not even a day. I wonder how much um, how much actual in-game time had I played. It looks like just about one year. Pretty sure the game started like January 1st of 2015. So it took about a year. We're up to 3,200 people. We're making money. Town's doing okay, and uh, that'll that'll just about do it. So that's the end of my preview footage, and uh, yeah, we'll just wrap it up here. So. Basically, I, I think this game's going to be a ton of fun. Again, you'll be definitely looking for a Let's Play series on my channel as soon as the game comes out. And uh, I believe it's available, I think, March 11th or 10th of this year. So keep your eyes out. Should be just a couple more weeks, and we'll be seeing this game live soon. Thanks for watching, everyone. As always, if you like this video, feel free to click the like button, share it, do any of those types of things, leave a comment, let me know what your thoughts are. It does help me out a great deal, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you soon.